you look back on history, you'll find that we were not stewards of the environment the way that we are today. In part two of our special report, As the River Flows, Corey Atkins shows us how a certain industry almost destroyed an entire river. It's 79 acres of kind of tucked in the middle of Manistee National Forest, so it's kind of unique being, being the only state land in this area. The Tippy Dam State Park, located on the main branch of the Manistee River. It's a place where people come to canoe and kayak. It's also a place where anglers from all over the world come to try and get that trophy fish. All because of this, the Tippy Dam. There's no fish ladder on the dam, so this is as far up as the fish can go. So when you have all those thousands of fish running right here and stopping this location. It's also a river that was almost completely dead 100 years ago, all because of our thirst for wood started in the 1850s. Manistee has been a logging, was started out as a logging town. And the river played a very important role in the logging history here. It was in camps like this all up and down the Manistee River where they started an almost 60 year pillage of the land. To move all these logs, the river was vital. And to get the logs to the river, they used gravity. And so you had the Udall Hills Rollway which played a very important role in after the loggers were done um, cutting all their logs and getting everything ready, they would roll them down uh, the, the rollways. Into the river and floated here, Manistee Lake, a very different looking lake back then. There were about 14 lumber mills dotting the shores. Manistee Lake was, was a very uh, heavy, heavy industry. What it looked like back then, it's hard to imagine now, uh, but looking at historic photographs, looking at how the whole area was, it's fascinating. But all that lumbering had an unintended consequence. They cleared the entire area just to make it easier for bringing logs in. Um, they kind of destroyed a lot of the riparian vegetation, which is, I mean, vital for keeping the water temperature cooler. It was, you know, a couple decades if, and longer of this river being pretty much just a transportation mode for logs, which um, all that silt and erosion due to the loss of the riparian vegetation kind of choking out the, uh, the bedding areas where fish weren't able to reproduce. It was years, if not decades, before the fish came back and the river repaired itself. Lead Ranger Brian Miller hopes we all learn from the past. You still feel that, that remoteness. You can just kind of get lost in, in everything that's going on. The white noise of the river flowing, the birds and everything. And those who don't remember history, you know, is doomed to repeat it kind of a thing. I mean, they're, they're up here enjoying this. We got guys swinging dry flies over here. 40, 50 years ago, they weren't even able to do that. For 9 and 10 News, I'm Corey Adkins.